Hey, hey, here with Easy Jeezy. I want to make a video today and talk about crankshaft end play. It's a subject that comes up from time to time, and usually when you're looking at a used motor or a car, it's one of the things that people like to uh, look at. It kind of gives them an idea of how much wear and tear has been put on the engine. Now, the book calls out between three and five, so of course four thousandths end play would be ideal, but it's they'll run just fine with more than that, and I want to show you uh, how to check for it right now. Okay, you want to make sure that your car is in neutral and that it's, it's parked on a, in such a way that the motor can turn back and forth. Uh, if you first walk up to an engine, uh, what they'll do, whether it's in a car or a Baja, is you'll pull back and forth on this. Now, you can see the whole suspension move. I'm using quite a lot of pressure, and it's the engine hasn't been run since yesterday, so there's the oil has settled out of it. Now, when I first came up to it and grabbed it, I didn't get anything. I couldn't feel it move. What you're going to want to probably do is get your crankshaft to move back and forth a little bit. And I want you to listen. There is a noise. These guys are painting a house across the street, so I don't know if you can hear that little tapping noise. That is. The crankshaft has got a helical cut gear on it for the camshaft and there's a steel gear on the crankshaft. And there's supposed to be a little bit of end play on your camshaft as well. When you have a higher performance engine such as this one here, it has heavy duty single springs on it. They're a little bit heavier valve springs than stock and that will affect what you feel. But once you've got it loosened up, and you move it back and forth a little bit, then you can grab hold of your crankshaft and, and you can feel it move back and forth. And it's it's just, it's one of those things you can use a dial indicator if you want to set it up. If you, There's various ways of doing it with a dial indicator. And I don't have one that's going to fit with this header system the way it is. So I'm just going to describe it. And... Uh, Somebody just posted a video, I believe it was Terry, uh, and he was saying that the engine wouldn't turn over. It seemed like it was locked up. If you have a well-worn engine, sometimes you can go backwards. Say, for example, when you're adjusting your valves, the way the books talk about it, going one, two, three, four, and I never do it that way. I just, I've showed many times on how I adjust my valves. Um, I'll just start wherever I'm at and I always turn clockwise that way I'm not loosening any bolts on anything and typically if there's an aluminum pulley down here those typically can get play in them the groove will wear out for your fan belt quicker and they generally just won't last as long as a steel pulley now this particular engine is a 20 year old 2110 stroker motor and we recently took it apart to seal some oil leaks we added some shims under the cylinders and I put brand new uh, racing heads on it with larger valves and somebody left a comment they said why didn't you add shims to take out that end play slop now again I'm going to put a wrench on here. Now this engine has got heavy duty single springs on the valves as well. It's just hardly got anything. It's still after 20 years. It feels real tight. That's the point. Okay. Now. Here's an old case. This was my 1776. The crankshaft that came out of it is right here. And it's the complete assembly. 
Now this particular crankshaft was counterweighted, welded counterweighted crank. The bearings are fine on the crankshaft. And let's take a look at the rear bearing. This is what you're capturing. Now there's pins that go in all of these journals here and they go into a hole in the bearing. It's very, very rare that you'll spin a main bearing because they are locked in place with those pins if it's done properly, okay? Now, here's the where the pin would go and this was the bearing that came out of this case and it's still, after all these years, this is also a 20 year motor, this is where you get your fit. Now this case was cut forth over. Um, I knew that when I purchased the bearings for it, but I wanted to build it anyhow, and it lasted four years, uh, 20 years. Uh, four thousandths clearance is what I had on the crankshaft, between the bearing and the crankshaft. These are the old uh, original equipment steel back bearings they're a lot heavier than some of the new bearings that you get but it's where when they talk about pounding out the case what it, they're talking about is this area right here many times this is where the shims go the shims come in a variety of, of uh, thicknesses and you want to have at least three of those shims in there you would put, I don't know if, how I can do this so that it makes sense. This bearing would go on your crankshaft. Then you'd want to have at least three shims. And when you got done, that's how you arrive at the four thousandths between three and five thousandths clearance for the end play back and forth your flywheel goes on next and it goes up against these shims now just to just to show you this was an assortment of shims uh, this isn't an accurate way of doing it there's one that's 11 that's 12 that's 9 And when you're scrapping out a motor, these are the kinds of things that you can save uh, because you can reuse them. Now, you ask yourself, well, how do you get free play? What causes the free play? If the pistons and connecting rods are going back and forth from side to side, what creates that play this way? Well, it's vibration on the engine. If you have a uh, heavy-duty valve springs, it's going to put pressure on things uh, when you shut your car on, uh, shut your car off, turn it back on to start it, uh, things move and they shift. Every time you push in the clutch, when you push in the clutch, you're pushing on that throwout bearing and you're putting pressure directly on these shims. That's why you want to have three of them because as this thing, as the flywheel, and everything is in this area if there is any slippage you don't want the that back of the flywheel rubbing on this soft bearing material here you want something in between it so this is saturated in oil and this is allowed to turn so as time goes on because the case is uh, soft softer than the crankshaft and everything else in here it wears back and forth if you have a worn engine and you take it apart and just go to add more of these shims and realign it what you're doing is changing the ideal location of your connecting rods on the crankshaft you're shifting you're actually moving that whole crankshaft assembly over and you can cause more problems and more wear uh, right where you don't want it all right, there's something else I want to show you about the distributor gear. Uh, okay, now here you have another example. I hope you can see this. The light's not the best. On this engine, I ran straight cut cam gears. When you run straight cut gears, you feel the end play and it doesn't move to the side. You what you 
you kind of feel like it goes in and comes out, goes in and comes out. And that's because of a stock style helical, helical gear. That's why it kind of goes back and forth as you turn it. With the, with the high performance setup with the straight cut gears, you wouldn't notice that. It would just go straight back and forth. But you can get pressure because of the heavy, this had double springs on it, which was a lot of pressure, and it would create drag as you moved in and out. In and out. Now, I want to show you the, this is your uh, distributor drive gear, and it's made of brass. This is your distributor drive gear, and it drops down through the hole up above, and it goes down, and it, it sits in here at an angle into that brass gear. As this crankshaft turns, it causes this to rotate. So when you pull your distributor out, this is what you're looking at. And this is what rides in there. And when you start getting a lot of end play, it can feel like it, it binds up stiff because it can get so far out that it gets caught on the end of this. And this is worn down so much. It creates wear on everything. It changes your distributor. Uh, if you have a strobe light and you're timing your engine um, and you see the line is always jittery and jumping, there are several things that can cause that. One of them is that end play. Things are moving around and this is chattering and it's moving, it's moving back and forth in the gear. It's beating this brass gear up where it's ruining it and it's causing slop and play in the distributor drive shaft gear and you could have wear in the distributor bearings as well. So I hope this helps clarify what in play is about and why you don't want to try to correct it by adding shims on an old engine. You want to set it correctly on a new engine and it is basically a uh, tattletale way of seeing how much wear and tear was done on the engine. If it didn't have an oil filter, if the oil wasn't changed regularly, if it had a heavy duty clutch, if it had just been run hard a lot, those are the things that accelerate the wear and cause more end play sooner. Every time you step on the gas with the car and then coast, let off, if you do that a lot, or if it's an off-road car and you're in the rocks and you're just cook, 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 you know, jumping over uh, whoops and, and rocks and different things out in the sand or any kind of dirt road driving, those are the things that cause it to beat out the case. So I hope that clarifies things. This is, gone. This is a pretty long video. I do appreciate you watching. This is an important point with uh, all engines, whether they're new or old. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subbing. Easy Jeezy out.